Star, that's from the Blur, a self-titled release uh, just out from Virgin Records. I'm Chris Doritas. Morning Becomes Eclectic on KCRW Blur, appearing tonight in live performance at the Palace in Hollywood. Show that's been sold out for some time, Papa's Fritas opening the evening. That's tonight at the Palace in Hollywood. Joining us in studio ne- uh, next, it's uh, members of Blur, Damon Albarn, Graham Coxon, Alex James. There's one missing this morning, right? <laughs> Yeah, Dave, he's, um, I don't know what's the matter with him, but... Drummer Dave. Five, four o'clock this morning. Oh, yeah. But we've got, we've got Neve. We've got Neve. Neve. <laughs> Smoggy is going to take place... Uh, no, 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 Smoggy chickened out and Neve is... <laughs> oh, okay. Neve, Neve's here. Oh, this sorry. is Neve. I can't, I can't even see. There you are. Um, so we, uh, we have somebody taking care of drums. Thanks for coming yeah. down this morning, guys, and uh, congratulations. It's terrific work. Actually, on this track that we just heard, there are four drum kits playing. Is that right? Yeah, the, um, yeah, it's just me and Dave bash, bashing on drums. Just bashing away. And then we rewound it and had another track and bashed on drums again. <laughs> so it's, it's about four, yeah. I think. So you built drums upon drums and... Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we just wanted it to be a bit scary. Now, I, I misspoke. I mean, the, the album is, uh, is already in stores. I think one of the release dates was the 25th. It's been in stores now for, I think, two uh, weeks. A week, a week. A week and a half, something yeah. like that. Um, so you, you say... You, you wanted it to be a bit scary. Is that <laughs> uh, this particular track? You wanted it to be a bit scary. Is There's that a few scary things on there, mm. but I th- you know, I, th- I think it's good to be scared by music. I was scared by music. I know when I was four, I was listening to Strawberry Fields forever and stuff, and wondering what the hell it was about. Uh, yeah, I am the Walrus. That's yeah. that's scary, man. <laughs> Nothing scary. is real. It's quite scary. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I think this indicates some sort of um, uh, desire that you had for this album. I mean. I think we we had a lot of sort of ghosts to exercise, really. Um, So we just shut ourselves away last summer and got on with, you know, making a record as opposed to all the other stuff you have to put up with in England. Let's go back to the point where, uh, just before you took off to make the album, describe the the setting for for you guys, for the band, what you were in the midst of that you were trying to get Uh, out of. Well, we, we just finished promoting the last album the great escape and i think everyone was just really tired. yeah really tired you know but sort of it got seven years we've been together and all those things that they say happen were happening and um you mean the the, the typical each. trappings of being a rock star no not so much that well to a degree that but but more of a sort of just being in a relationship for that you know that long hmm. um and it, it just seemed obvious that the only thing that was going to make it worthwhile carrying on was to was to just make a record which we were all really pleased with. I mean, you, you never know you're going to do that, but you, I suppose we just sort of set down ground rules like, you know, we wouldn't use brass instruments, we wouldn't use strings, and that um, we wouldn't aspire to sort of make pop music, really. Which is a kind of a difference to the last three albums, which were very much, as you said earlier, about sort of culture in Britain, and you know, it was, it just got out of hand the whole thing. I mean, the fact that Vanity Fair is talking about it, I think, is a, is a good example of you know, how why musicians should stay clear of it, you know, because it, it just turns into something outside of what what, what you intended it to be. So it was, it's my impression that it was sort of an inward turn to the original seed that was the band uh, yeah. years ago when I listened to the album it actually sounds to me like the b-sides and things that turned up from you guys over the years or some of the you know yeah I mean there's the stuff that like the, the, on all the in albums. terms of the you know in terms of the quality of the recording which no, I love, I, yeah yeah I, th- I think just simply we didn't try and clean things up we just left them as they were but you know we, we took a lot of time thinking how we we're going to get things to sound like that because it it does it's it's just it does, doesn't happen like you know you turn up and play in a room and it sounds great it doesn't i wish it was that easy but it's sort of you know hmm. well um let's head into our our first live piece here this is um from the new album which is just called blur and it hasn't really got a name actually but okay kind of, you know. <laughs> so it's a sort of by a, blur an untitled album yeah Featuring uh, members of Blur in the studio here, Damon Albarn, Graham Coxon, and Alex James, and we have Neve on drums. Neve, yes. Blur, live.
watch TV Countryside Armor by love Father come by road Yeah, I'm a blizzard I am my mobile home performance on KCRW's Morning Becomes Eclectic, Country Sad Ballad Man in live performance. You can find the uh, album version on the new uh, CD from Blur, just out from Virgin Records. It's been out for a week or so. There's a show tonight at uh, the Palace in Hollywood. It will be a full uh, electric, uh, full band performance tonight at the Palace. We have Neve on drums. I'm sorry? Say that again? Full Flash deal. Lines. Full deal, yeah. <laughs> Damon Albarn is in the studio with us, Graham Coxon and uh, Alex James, with Neve helping out on drums. Dave uh, Rountree is under the weather um, this morning. <laughs> He's dying his hair. Under the <laughs> <laughs> now, um, th- this simplicity that you were going back to, this sort of back-to-basics um, approach on this new album, was it scary for you guys to sort of uh, peel off all the shellac and, and get, get down it's to it and trust the instincts? Um... I don't know, really. I don't think. I think we were so kind of angry. Really, we didn't think about that. You know, mm. it was it was really an act of survival for us. You know, it, we didn't want to throw all that hard work away. But it wasn't like we were, we were desperate. They weren't like it wasn't like desperate sessions. No, no, not, <laughs> not in like that really sense. It just seemed really natural. Yeah, natural. Yeah. Well, what I meant by what could be better? Was that I think you know we, we just literally closed ourselves off and just didn't read any of the music press or, or anything I mean we went to Iceland as well yeah um, I want to ask you about that um, in a bit but before we leave that I want to there was a tow rope to a certain extent I mean you guys were listening to Beck and Pavement I understand and some other American bands I mean, the first time I actually heard Beck was uh, um, someone from Geffen Mark Gates gave me uh, a cassette of uh, his session with you. Oh, Which the I one here. To a lot. I really loved. <laughs> yeah, it was really great. The Woody Guthrie session. <laughs> it was brilliant, though. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he's a funny guy. Um, so that did have an impact on you guys in in some way. Um, I mean, well, I, th- I think I think the main thing was that we just didn't seem to re- relate to any of the bands in Britain, and, and and at least in America there was a sort of there was still some intelligence in the music. It's sort of. It's become very hip to be an idiot in England. You know. <laughs> I'm free to be an idiot, as the Russells sang. Um, I'm free to be an idiot. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> I thought you were going to do that for us for a second. Um, so there's also a short attention span over there, uh, wouldn't you say? It seems like things are going so fast, so yeah. rapidly. Well, it's the weekly music press. I mean, it... it, it it, it's self-defeating in many respects because it just it's kind of it's th- hunger to, to discover new things kind of leaves a lot of things half read really 
it's good and bad when yeah, you say because you know somebody who's just working out of their bedroom with a with well, a great demo can you know suddenly yeah, within six months can you know see so that happened actually with white town right? yeah, yeah white town exactly tune, that. yeah yeah but i think um i think the more time you spend out of uh, out of britain that it, it does seem to sort of reveal itself as being you know slightly ridiculous silly yeah well, it, it makes uh, any sort of endurance next to impossible. I mean, a band that you know wants to stick around and be creative and change and grow and develop. Well, you ha just have to play such you know elaborate games with them if you're going to survive. Well, if you make good music, yeah. Well, of course, be interested. No, I know. What do you mean by elaborate games? I mean, well, you have to play them the way they play you. Yeah. If you're going to, or, or just leave the country, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is what you did, you ended up going to Iceland for a bit. Yeah, um, kind of, yeah. I think, I think, looking back, that probably was what I was doing at the time. I, I, I wouldn't admit to myself that I was, you know, running away, but I suppose I was to a certain extent. Well, there was something else though that must have drawn you to Iceland. Why, you know, why Iceland? I don't know. I used to dream about. It. I had a recurring dream for my late adolescence about this. Um, this black sand and black sea and I just identified it eventually with Iceland and turned up. So you recorded part of the album in Reykjavik? Uh, not so much. I did quite a few of the vocals there. But I wrote quite a lot of the album up there. Was there a, a you know, group of people there that you hooked up with? That oh, you... yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. Describe that. It's an amazing forest. village, you know. What is it? Kind of utopian village. Uh, it was just, uh, they're very, they've just got a wonderful spirit about them, and it's a very together culture. You know, it's very small, and but very aware of itself, and, and very self, it's not, it's, it's, it's not selfish, but it, it, it it, it doesn't want to kind of progress. It just wants to stay as it is, mm. which is really great. And, it, you know, the country is just so empty but stunningly beautiful. And, you know, and, and, I mean, I know I always wax lyrical about it, but you can literally go to... You can drink water from any anywhere, any even the, the river that runs through Reykjavik, you can drink water. Wow. <laughs> from, And that's amazing just to, to have that knowledge when you, you step out. You must get some dirt in your mouth, though. <laughs> yeah, I oh, know, I know. I'm not, I mean, I know it's, it sort of sounds like it's... Um, well, this is topical it, you get, for anyway, if, if, That's the impression you get anyway, whether it's true or not, you know. And, mm. and, you, know. you can eat the snow. <laughs> <laughs> we have, uh, we have uh, a member of Gus Gus coming in yeah. tomorrow. So. Yeah, we keep bumping into him, actually, yeah. around America. Um, we're hearing uh, Damon Albarn and Graham Coxon of Blur. They are with us in the studio for what will be um, a, a taste, really, of what's happening tonight at the Palace for a sold-out show. Papa Sritas opening the evening tonight. Also in the studio, Alex uh, James, who's uh, um, helping out on bass. And we have um, Neve, who's standing in for Dave Rountree on drums. Uh, let's head into the next one. What's it going to be? This is going to be... Um, uh, this is... Look, look it's inside. About him. being on tour in America, it's our. It's about being on tour in America. Yeah, our <coughs> last tour of America. It's kind of a, a magic spell that we cast. Ourselves. Blur in the studio. Good morning, lethargy. Drink Pepsi. It's good for energy. Five songs. Smoke in the bedroom. Sore throat and on my neck a nasty bruise. And where it came from, well I don't know. We played last night. It was a good show. Got the player separate chat show. It's a nationwide deal, so we gotta go. Jump from a car. Look inside, Erica, she's alright, she's 
on KCRW's Morning Becomes Eclectic, Damon Albarn, Graham Coxon, Sorry Alex... about the high notes. No. <laughs> it's too early. I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't got there yet. Hey, this is, this is you know, just an innate part of the show. People come in here, you know, and... I know, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Please. Don't. Those people <laughs> put up with those high notes. Not at all. We have... Uh, uh, Damon Albarn, Graham Coxon, Alex James with Neve on drums, Blur in uh, an acoustic performance. Uh, the show is tonight at the Palace, and it is sold out. Papa's Free Test opening the evening. Uh, look for the new release from Blur on Virgin Records in store now for about a week. I'm Chris Doritas, and you know th- this this sort of um, let's get away from it all and and build an album that we feel proud of approach has really forged a new relationship for you guys, hasn't it? Uh, that's my impression. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, well, it's kind of just re-established the old one. Mm. And you got to know each other a little bit again. Yeah. Mm. It, it is really weird how you spend, you know, all your life with someone and totally forget who they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, Does what, anyone that feel like that ever? What does this mean for um, for the coming years for you guys? I mean, has this caused any kind of writing spurt? I would think that um, this is sort of uncovering, you know, a newfound territory for you or rediscovered, you know, territory for you guys that would cause... A I, th- I, think, I think it's just sort of... It just means that, you know, wh- whatever we do next will be... We just won't feel constrained. Well, I mean, it doesn't... You know, this, re- this record is just sort of set us free I know it sounds very corny but mm. it must uh, also affect the way you address the older material too in live performance yeah I think um, we've always been this is more, more a reflection of the way we sound live anyway this record mm. we've always been quite tough live but the old stuff it's probably gained some intensity I mean actually from, from us feeling good um but but uh, I mean it's still treated and presented pretty much the same. Mm, mm. But I, I think it has. I think it's sounding better just because we're more optimistic. More optimistic. Yeah. Which uh, ironically sort of mirrors what what seems to be happening in, in London right now. You know there is. I was just there like yeah. two weeks ago, and there seems to be this feeling on the streets that everything is looking up. And you know. Well, I mean, we're going to have a ch- we're going to have 60s. a new government, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, I think. You have to sort of keep your eyes open, really, because it, the, I think things are definitely changing, but 
you know the the, the, the parameter for change is so sort of slight now in you know i mean it, it's going to shift but not a great deal and you have to sort of it's sort of a bit depressing i find that you know it could it could be this it could be used to more positive ends really than just sort of slightly changing everything hmm. yeah. well the, the next general election is uh coming up may 1st may 1st yeah and it could witness the end to 18 years I think it will. I mean, the main tabloid, The Sun, has suddenly decided that it's a socialist paper from being a conservative <laughs> paper for the last, the last 18 years. Oh, I don't know any of this. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, so... So, I mean, what, what, once The Sun says vote, yeah, everyone does. So it's going to happen, most likely. Well, fantastic. Um, let's head into our, our last live piece, uh, On Your Own, right? Yeah, mm. lots of high notes. <laughs> okay. Blur on KCRW.
Thanks, guys. <laughs> Blur and live performance on KCRW's Morning Becomes Eclectic. Damon Albarn, Graham Coxon, Alex James, with special guest Neve on drums, helping out for the vacationing, Dave Rountree. <laughs> Um, you know what I found out that, uh, I, found, I thought was so interesting was that you guys, in one of your earliest incarnations, you were uh, this, this thing called Seymour, sort of a Brechtian band, is that right? Um, it was just scary, really. Yeah. Sonic terrorism. Sonic we, terrorism. It, it's, it was very adolescent, but quite, quite a lot of fun. You were sick and confusing. What's funny is that, you know, you hear sort of a Brechtian thing come up every now and again, like on Park Life, you know, with uh, Debt Collector and Far Out and Theme for Retro. Yeah. On, on this new album. It's there. I mean, I think that's probably me. I just, that's what I kind of just grew up with that stuff a lot. Really? So you're a big Brecht fan? Kurt Vile, really. Kurt Vile. Yeah. <laughs> well, that we'll go out for rocks. a, we'll go out for a, uh, <laughs> with a bit of this from the new album, uh, the uh, theme from Retro. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you Thank coming you. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Blur on KCRW's Morning Becomes Eclectic.